now, red light. Yep. Okay, self-acceptance and sort of processing and getting to the light. Um, I think, you know, one of the great things, and it was so joyful for me to hear it, uh, I think people who are suffering or people who are going through breakups or serious illness or whatever it is, you know, you get, you get these general thoughts from the collective like it will never end and or this is going to go on forever and ever or it's mm. the situation is hopeless yes. and this is going on and on and on and I'm just like I can't take it any longer all of these things can happen can happen after a breakup with a serious illness uh, with all kinds of very heavy things that happen and, um, and I really loved and I'm just going to repeat what Hawkins said it was like it was such a light bulb to me he says that the ego is finite, like everything you've got in the ego is finite, means it does eventually run out. And I was like, it was like, it was like rocket science when I heard it, heard it, you know, it's like, you know, like if you're an overeater and you think, and you feel hungry, you think the hunger will never end. You think like, oh my God, if I feel hungry, if I don't eat now, then I'll be hungry forever and it won't be worth living. Or if you... Or if you're like someone's gone and you're feeling like longing, it's like, oh my God, this longing is so awful mm. that I have to have some alcohol, some drugs, or put Netflix on just to try and numb the pain, you know, because it'll go on forever. I don't want to feel it going on forever. It's just too much. And uh, uh, so, and then Hawkins said that everything that was in the ego, or you could say the karmic, the karma that's within the ego, Everything within it, it's finite. It will eventually run out if you know how to release it. This, that, this baggage is finite. So for me, there's two core aspects. I, to, I, I like to look at it, two core aspects. There's all the repressed and suppressed emotions, shall we say. I'm just going to make it simplistic. The repressed and suppressed emotions and all the limiting beliefs that are held within the ego. So let's call these two different aspects. And it's finite. There's only so many limiting beliefs within the, uh, within the ego, and there's only so much repressed feelings. And a very simplistic way of looking at it is like, if I start doing transcending work or spiritual work, especially that aimed at the level of enlightenment, then I'm, like, let's pretend, and I was, I was an addict. I had extreme feelings of repressed. <coughs> you know, I had kidney failure, life-threatening illnesses, and facing death, and doctors trying to say, you know, save me as my kidneys were failing. So I had gone into this route of pursuing external things to make me happy and always never feeling anything. I never wanted to feel anything. I'll have a donut in my mouth, I'll be watching something, I'll be in extreme workalism and adrenaline addiction in the stock market. Non-stop activity, never to feel. And always trying to control the world at 100 miles an hour. So my ego was going at 100 miles an hour and I never felt. So I was building up. All these 30 years, I built up so much. You know, when my pigeon died, my pet pigeon died, I made a boiling pan of potatoes and had it with butter. Just potatoes and butter. I didn't want to feel that grief. I just wanted to medicate and not feel. So when I started, I was exposed to spiritual teachings. And I was sort of hooking, sort of, I got it like this. It's like, well, all those years of never feeling... You know, like there was a, you know, if you had a breakup, you just eat ice cream uh, as long as you could, or just have whatever it is, or just do some activity so you don't have to feel. So that means when I, when I start to do the letting go process, it means I have a backlog mm -hmm. before I get to the infinite realm. This was so enlightening. It's not like it's forever. I have a backlog. And I, I, I visualized it like, oh, I have a cylinder of shame. Like I have 300 units of shame for never feeling my shame for 30 years. I have another cylinder of guilt, 300 units. Every time I wanted to feel guilty, I didn't feel guilty, I had a donut in my mouth. So that's 300 units of guilt. I had 300 units of fear. I had 300 units of pride. All of that repressed stuff, but it's finite. And this was like, this was like, oh, this is wonderful. Then it's like a game. It's like a game. It's like, okay. A situation comes up and I'm fearful. A situation comes up and I feel guilty. Someone dies and I feel like crying. But now it's like, okay. Or you could say these are from all the lifetimes of not, not experiencing all this stuff, however you want to look at it. Okay, so 
Now someone has died, now I can get to use the field of feelings or the course of miracles or the observer to allow this energy to come up. And if I've got 300, maybe I can let go of like 50 or 20 units of this for this one to come up. And then I can release that if I'm fully with it or I go to the observer or I cancel all the beliefs around it. I'll let this 20 units go forever. That's wonderful. And then the next time someone dies, I'll get, you know, and eventually you don't have to go through that because you're doing the observer and feel the feelings all the time and canceling the beliefs. You get to stay in the infinite realm. You stay, to, stay in the observer. You let out the backlog of repressed stuff. So every time I fear, don't resist. <coughs> don't eat a banana. Don't eat donuts. Don't put on the Netflix. Don't have the alcohol. Don't, book, don't go on and book five holidays or don't go on a shopping binge. There's so many different ways the ego uses to not experience that out, to let go. So you have an opportunity to let go of the backlog, not a chance to put more backlog in. And that was like exciting. Well, I, I want to be 100% free. Every time fear comes up, I want, to, I want to let it experience it and not put on Netflix, not eat a donut, not go on a dating website, not, I don't know, what, um, there's so many different things anyway not get an intense job so I'm in adrenaline addiction non-stop and 100% activity. Just experience it out to the, to the non-duel. So that became exciting. Or every time someone leaves you, they're in a special relationship, you can feel that codependency out. I don't want to be in codependent pain over and over again. Every time there's someone leaves me that I've become attached to, I want to experience that out so that next time there'll be less attachment. And then, and then there's no attachment. Just the infinite now, the infinite now, whether they're here or not, it's just the infinite now. None of that baggage and that pro projection and that whole... Because as soon as you make a projection that they're special, then you're, you're, you're to some extent, you're resisting the now because you're making a projection. And so repressed feelings and attachment is building up. Each time I say, it's so wonderful you're here today. I'm so happy you're here because you're so special. Then that's creating a block to the infinite now. And so that, that can create attachment over time. And then suddenly if that person's run over by a bus, suddenly it's like, oh, there's all these feelings and this loss and this depression, you see, because I didn't use it as an opportunity to, to, st to release that special projection and that attachment, that, uh, that something outside is, is important. So that was so, did you want to say, yeah, oh, do you want, yeah, okay.